Welcome to the Cabo Fishing Podcast, brought to you by Rancho del Pescador, Red Rum Sport Fishing, Marvita, and Proyecta Pupila. But uh, you're at 98 boats in the field. The total prize money is right now at 1.7685 million. So 1.7685 million. So here we are, we are in uh, uh, near, uh, in between Los Barilas and La Ribera in uh, the Baja, uh, California Sur, on the Cortez side, all right? So we're getting ready for the East Cape. This area is known as the East Cape, right? So Los Cabos, the, by definition, is the Capes. And so we are on the East Cape side of like the Southern Baja area. And uh, right behind us is the, the beautiful Buena Vista Resort, right there. And uh, we are getting ready for the Bisbee East Cape. One of the things I want to talk about right now is bait, right? So in Cabo San Lucas, where we fish out of uh, primarily, we, uh, we get our bait. It's caught every day. And uh, I also uh, provide bait uh, to the marina. Uh, we're, we're the provider of bait master bait, right? So I, I buy bait in uh, Miami, Florida and we have it reefer truck all the way across to Tijuana, imported in, you know, to Mexico, and then driven all the way down, thousand miles down the Baja Peninsula, all right? And so we're the preferred provider of bait master's bait in uh, the Los Cabos region, and primarily Ballyhoo, right? So Ballyhoo's this really cool fish, and uh, the reason we're like filming this is because uh, we actually have some live Ballyhoo, which is caught by our friends right here, all right, so part of Los uh, Amigos, and uh, so if you go to our website and uh, you look at Julio's Choice, uh, our 42 Cabo on uh, our website there, that's actually from here. Julio Cota is a famous fisherman. Dos Amigos Fishing is like one of the best fishing outfits in the East Cape, and we're like proud to be partnered with them. But like, I just I, I want to show like. Cause I'm like geeking out, right? Cause I love fish, but like, check out this little unicorn. All right. So like, ah. so this is a ballyhoo and they're alive, but I'll show you a frozen one here in a little bit, but it's got like a little under beak, right? Long little bill area and it like scoops. All right. But that's what we use as our primary bait. And so like, I will show you like the, 
the dead version here in a little bit. Uh, frozen that we bring in from Bait Masters in Florida. And uh, so really excited to share with you what like a live one looks like. And to have them in our live well is super exciting. And uh, like for me, I just, I love fish, so I'm geeking out. And it's been a great day. We already caught a blue marlin today. So we're like, what, what, what? What, 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 what? But like, you know, part of, part of fishing and the key to success is having the right presentation for the fish, right? You like, you know, if, if you want to like impress that fish and like catch that fish, you can't give it a chicken nugget. You can't go get the McDonald's Happy Meal. You can't get that processed crap. You gotta get the real thing. So we got some great mackerel, we got some great ballyhoo, we got some large ballyhoo that they caught. Uh, that's already muerte, it's already dead. Uh, but we're pretty excited to uh, have this live stuff in the live well. It's gonna be fun to like rig it and like deal like the process from start to finish. From catching it, to rigging it, to presenting it. So thank you so much. And uh, keep tuning in to uh, Cabo Fishing Podcast as we will keep bringing you uh, cool, cool content like this. Finger guns. In addition to the ballyhoo we just talked about, uh, my, my good friends here uh, from Dos Amigos, they caught a flying fish, right? So they used nets, and you can see like the, the wing, right? Like the fin that goes all the way down like the dorsal area. And he's like, he's a cool little guy. Whoa, oh, oh no, no, no. Fly. No, <laughs> stay alive, stay alive. We need you. But it's like, I mean, we see flying fish all the time. And when you look in there, it's like so neat because you realize how big their wingspan is in terms of their fuselage. And so you understand like how they catch lift and how they work the ground effect coming off the water. And so it's like super neat to like see them up close and alive uh, versus just flying off the bow pressure of your boat. And uh, you know, like we got some beautiful bait here. We're gonna do some great things. We got some good luck. We got our good friends. Salute. Because it's the hottest day of the year. And we just happen to be like, ah, let's go fish it. <laughs> but it's super cool. This is a really neat bait tank right now. This live well's got some really impressive fish in there. So I think we have all the ingredients to success. Now we just gotta go out and get some. Figure guns. Sun is rising, kind of as as we speak right here. Uh, we are uh, in this beautiful little bay uh, right outside. Uh, right here is the Buena Vista Resort, and then right around the corner, right over here, uh, is Los Barillas, and then uh, down that way around the corner is La Ribera, on the eastern cape, east cape of the Baja. Sur Peninsula, just south of La Paz. Beautiful night out here last night, uh, surrounded by ballyhoo, gaviota in the water. It was just so much fun just to sit on the boats. Uh, we had a little cookout, uh, made some hamburgers, and uh, tonight, on tonight's menu, <clears throat> is uh, carne asada a la Capitan Cali. So if you've watched our uh, YouTube series, or some of the earlier episodes of the podcast. There's a Meet Captain Cali episode, go check it out. Um, but behind us is uh, Oso Rojo, all right? That's our 46 Bertram. And uh, that is team, what a catch, number, team number 35, what a catch. And uh, they're all ready, they got their team jerseys on. They're out of Central Texas. Uh, they own uh, some Whataburgers, which is a really awesome, uh, restaurant, family-owned restaurant chain out of uh, Texas. And uh, so they're gonna go out there today and uh, get after it. Super excited for them. They brought the, a couple of young ones with them. So hopefully they uh, get to, you know, feel some of the excitement. Uh, the scales are right over there. We'll be going there in a little bit in a couple of hours after we catch a big fish. So we're pretty pumped about that. And uh, there's always like, 
pre-shotgun start jitters, right? So all the boats are gonna line up uh, in, a, in a general sense of the word lining up. Uh, we all have to be behind a certain start, a fictional line in the water, a notional line in the water. And uh, they'll get over the tournament radio and you know they'll give us the information, they'll tell us how much money we're competing for today. Uh, rumor has it that it's gonna be over a million dollars. So we're pretty pumped about that. And uh, they'll shoot a couple of star clusters off and do a little thing over the radio. And then all these boats, so there's about a hundred sport fishers here right now. And uh, we're all gonna get after it. Throttle up, go to our, our best spot. We gotta go find some bait. Uh, we've got some really good uh, dead bait prepared. We had some local fishermen uh, go and get us uh, some really good size. Hey, Chewy, hold up one of the, the uh, just a couple things of the local bait. We have some really large ballyhoo too. I'm not sure, that's a pretty, but we'll, uh, we'll show that to you guys later. And, uh, but we're gonna go get uh, some bonitas and we're gonna put them in the tuna tubes. Uh, we got our Scotty uh, downrigger about to get mounted right here. Uh, so we can send a, a nice big fat juicy piece of meat to the depths for the biggest fish that we're gonna find. The water temperature is exceptionally hot right now. It's like 89 to 90 degrees, um, which is kind of above the, the temperature range that the fish actually enjoy. So uh, we're hoping that if we go a little bit below, like we go one atmosphere down, uh, the temperature, uh, we get through the photo level, the temperature will drop maybe hopefully 84, 85, which would be perfect temperature. Uh, we were noticing yesterday and we were paying attention to the bait levels uh, in the water and at those depths. And uh, we're gonna try and uh, target in that area today. Uh, we got on our, our rip charts and our Finterra and we looked at the satellite imagery to, to make sure we were going to the, the best possible locations. And uh, everyone's fueled, everyone's iced. Uh, we got the best food, the best catering. This is one of, my, one of the reasons this is my favorite tournaments is my, my main homie, as everyone knows, Chuy Agundes. Uh, their mom, so Chuy's brother, Julian, is also the mate on uh, Rojo over there. And uh, they are from La Ribera. So this is home fishing for them, home waters. This is where they were born and raised. They know everything about this spot. That's why uh, they're a crucial part of our team. That and they're actually like kind of good fishermen. But their mom does our catering when we're visiting this town. And so like we have, she makes the best tortas, burritos, wraps, fried chicken, what? And so we, uh, I mean, we look forward to winning a lot of money, but there's also the reality that we just really want to eat Chewy's mom's fried chicken. But we're really here to fish. But as you see, boats are starting to head out, getting lined up, and uh, what time, we're getting close, so. Sweet, good luck everybody. See you at the scales. Uh, 98 boats. We didn't quite tag that 100 boat mark, but uh, you're at 98 boats in the field. The total prize money is right now at 1.7685 million. So 1.7685 million. So if you're in uh, across the board, your dailies are roughly $450,000. Yeah, if you're in the soup, that's without the chupacabra. If you're in the chupacabra, we did end up with six in the chupacabra, um, which I guess if I add we have six, that would be a hundred thousand a day, two hundred thousand a day, add another two hundred thousand to that uh, four hundred and fifty for the daily for those six of you out there that are quite frankly nuts. Uh, okay, game fish category sixty-five thousand dollars a day for that, so that's awesome for the game fish. Way station will be open twelve to seven. Well report, gang. Son 98 equipos y 1.764.000 dólares. Crecimos con relación al año pasado una embarcación, pero bastante en dinero. La báscula de 12 All right, so they just came over the tournament control radio. They're they're doing it in Spanish now. But uh so 
we're competing for $1.765 million. Uh, dailies are at 400,000, and then uh, game fish is, uh, what do you say, 60,000? 60,000. So we're in the, the biggest fish, and then we're in the biggest game fish, uh, and the game fish daily jackpots. So we have a really good chance of making some money today. And uh, we're getting ready. Everyone's you know, kind of pulled in. And uh, the report is, you know, from yesterday. Four minutes, gang, four minutes. And we're four minutes out. And uh, the report from yesterday is pretty good. So we know where we're going. We have our plan. We're tuned in, we're locked in, and it's about to, to be a wild start. So look forward to, shotgun starts are always exciting. So ride along and enjoy. So this is day two of the, uh, the Bisbee East Cape. And we are just off, uh, this is La Ribera, Baja, which is the hometown of Chuya Gundas, first mate. We are trying to catch some live bait real fast. We learned yesterday that that was probably our best bet to get some bait to get down deep. We are doing that right now. Our other boats going hard in the shotgun. They're making a good run right now. We're trying to get some for ourselves. But it's fun out here. It's beautiful. This is really neat because the spot we're at right now is where Chewie's dad used to bring him and his brothers. So it's really cool, you know, to kind of get a glimpse in at what life is like, you know, for Chewie and his brothers growing up. I have two of the Gunas brothers that work with us, and uh, the, uh, it's, you know, it's really great when you see like what fishing really is here. It's like it's a way of life, and it's like it's a family business, you know. And we're kind of getting into that family. So it's really neat to be at a space uh, where they're at. And so Captain Callie, Chewy, me, we're just out here trying to catch a little bait. <laughs> just a couple of squirrels trying to get a nap. 
we make some money. You know, there's not, you know, they, there was only a 44 pound Dorado yesterday, uh, 386 uh, black marlin, and uh, a 66 pound tuna, which in the grand scheme of things aren't very big fish. So we're, uh, we're, we're right in the hunt, we're right in it, and uh, we're going to put a little local knowledge to it and get after it. So it's day three, uh, Bisbee, uh, East Cape, and uh, we're out here in the Sea of Cortez fishing right now. I uh, wanted to take a few minutes uh, to uh, talk about uh, our fishing yesterday. Uh, I learned a very hard, uh, embarrassing, and valuable lesson. So we hooked up on a, a big fish with the big gear. Uh, I got. I got in the chair and uh, you know like uh, it, it bit on our outside off the outrigger, uh, rod was right here, uh, we got it hooked up, got everything set, transitioned to the chair, got into the chair and uh, immediately like you know taking the rod out of the, out of the, the pedestal in the chair to put it into the, the pedestal uh, in, the, in the chair like could feel like could feel the difference could feel the pull and I just knew we had like a really big fish on and so like hard fight uh, I typically don't sit in the chair I like to stand but because of the size of this fish and how big we thought it was I uh, got in the chair and that changed uh, the dynamic for me of of the fight and uh, it was a really hard fight. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna, you know, like sell it short. One of the things that I was so uncomfortable. Uh, you know, the chair is really too big for me. Uh, this is one of our charter boats. You know, while we have it customized for tournaments, uh, the chair in it is a little bit bigger to kind of accommodate some of our bigger guests. Uh, I'm not a bigger guest. I'm a smaller dude. <laughs> And so like, I was like a little kid, like, I'm a real boy, like in, in my chair. And uh, you know, it made it really uncomfortable. It put a lot of pressure and tension on my lower back. I had no way to support that. Uh, it was changing uh, the depth at which I, you typically hold the rod. And uh, so it took me out of my comfort zone. Instead of being in my workspace right here, you know, my workspace was down here. And so it was taking me, uh, more muscling to, to get the rod up. Uh, fought, fought the fish for uh, 57 minutes. Um, really uh, challenging fight. I, I love those mental moments. Took me back to Fort Benning, where you know, like you find out who you are and you're inside, you're like talking about, like, I'm not letting go. And uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, we got the fish up to the side of the boat. And uh, as a team, as a crew, we had to make a decision. Uh, 
the captain and the mate, Callie and Chewy, uh, everyone got a good look at the fish. We saw that the fish was short, but we also saw that the fish had some girth on it, kind of like me, right? And so we have this barrel-chested blue marlin, and we have to make a decision. Now, nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, this decision's super easy, let it go. However, we're in a tournament for a lot of money and no qualifying fish had gone to the scales. And so we had the opportunity, if we had a fish that was 300 and 301 pounds, uh, to like make some money, some real money. And uh, for us, like that helps our business, that helps our, our, our lives, you know, like that means a lot to my guys. It's not quite life-changing uh, money, but it, man, it's life-affecting money for sure. And uh, no qualifying fish have been taken to the scales. And we, we had a fish in our minds that really was. And uh, we did some mathematical uh, equation. Uh, you know, a lot of people know it. You take the, the length of the body, the fuselage of the fish from the lower part portion of the bill to the, the yolk and the tail. And then uh, if that's about 100 inches, uh, you have about a 300 pound fish. We were just short of 100 inches, but there was some girth on it. But in the water, we were having a hard time like getting a really good look at the tail. The tail, the height and width of the tail really is the the strongest indication of weight. And so we were like trying to figure that out, but at the same time, you have a very angry, several hundred pound fish beating against the side of your boat, beating up your mate. And you know, like, you know, you're still hooked up to this fish too. So you're trying to make this decision. Uh, do you just unhook, release, or uh, are we gonna capture this fish and bring it aboard? We made the decision uh, to capture the fish and bring it aboard. Uh, it had su sustained some damage in the fight. Um, it probably could have survived, but we decided uh, to bring it aboard. We boated the fish, and then once we really got it on board and we saw the tail, we knew like, okay, this is really questionable. But if it's 300 pounds, 301 pounds, it's again, life affecting money and so we took it to the scales and unfortunately our calculations were horrible and we were egregiously off so as a result of that you know we get penalized uh, which we deserve to be uh, and that penalty uh, goes against our next fish's weight uh, because the penalty is so steep, uh, it makes it really hard for us to, to compete or continue to compete in the Marlin uh, portion of the tournament. But we're not quitters. Uh, we're still in the game fish. And so we're like, we're out here, we've caught a Marlin again today. Uh, nice release, uh, good morning workout. And, uh, but I wanna share with everybody, like, yes, this is, absolutely a rookie mistake and I made it I'm the captain of the team uh, I'm the owner of the the brand uh, I'm the ambassador of conservation for our company and and i I messed up I I screwed up I made the wrong decision it in the end the buck stops with me uh, and you know like you know this we, we as the airborne say, you, you rig it, you ride it. And, uh, you know, like, I, I have to own it. And I am. The, uh, now, th this, this shortcoming, this failure, it's not fatal. It was for the fish, but it's not fatal for me. It's not fatal for my, my number one mate, and it's not fatal for my, one of my top captains if not the top captain, like, it's not fatal. What it is, is it's a mistake, and we learn from it. 
So like in jiu-jitsu, you know, like a guy by the name of Gracie uh, made the comment uh, and the famous quote, in life there's victories and, there, and then there are lessons. And, and this is a lesson. And it, it was a very embarrassing one, it's a hard one. And uh, it's a lesson I needed to learn and, and, I, and I'm learning it. Uh, you know, like my, my pride is probably hurt more than anything else. But in the end, like all lessons are good lessons. And uh, you know, like, again, I, I would throw a shout out to a, a guy that means a lot to me in terms of fishing is, you know, I, I absolutely respect him fishing. You know, sent me a message and uh, just kind of said, hey, saw, saw your fish, uh, tough break, you know, like get back out there. And, and that's, you know, wise words and I appreciated words and that's what we need to do. Um, and so like, I want y'all to like watch me fail. I want y'all to like watch me succeed. I want y'all to watch me learn these lessons and join with us on this, this channel here, like the Cabo Fishing Podcast and like find out what it's really like to fish, what it's like to be on a charter boat, what it's like to be on a tournament boat, what, it, what it's like to go you know, bottom fishing, what it's like to go, you know, surface hunting for swordfish, what, whatever it is, surf casting, you know, like we want you to join us on this journey. We want you to contribute to this journey. And so like when, when I learn a lesson, I want you to know that you're the first people I'm going to share it with because, you know, that that's what lessons are for. They're, they're to teach and, uh, you know, like I, I will continue to be taught. You know, like I'm kind of a rookie at this. I know that, and uh, you know, let's let's get back out there and let's uh, let's catch another fish and, and do it better. Can we get Trace? Sorry, Quattro Troy Picanas. Quattro Troy Picanas, and then uh, Trace uh, Empanadas. Por favor, now and chorizo. Uno chorizo, uno carne, uno caprese. So one of the great things about being here in Cabo is you can go to all these different places. You know, you, of course, you know, we eat a lot of fish as we catch a lot of fish. But sometimes you, on the way home after a long day or being out on the boat or whatever, you just want to come by and just get something. This is one of the greatest things that uh, we, we lack in American culture. Like families, you know, in, endeavoring you know to enterprise and do great things and like this is a really cool young family uh, you know I've been watching them for a year you know I, it started I just drove by and I watched him out here by himself just like you know with the one table and one little fire pit just just going at it and uh, they're from Argentina so what we're gonna get tonight is more of an uh, uh, authentic Argentinian uh, chorizo and beef sandwich uh, Troy Picanha and uh, so it's, 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 it's really neat. So like the Argentinian sausage and bread is like amazing. It's like a, this really cool chorizo, you know, and I, I liken it to the difference between like a barbecue sausage and a, like a Polish sausage or an Italian sausage. It's a unique sausage. It's really good. It's not greasy. It's really enjoyable. Cooked over like lump coal. The, uh, you know, you just got a really simple like fire box and then like takes the ashes and then you like, brings it under why and it's just it's beautiful I just love it you know it's there's something you know the way God intended you know cooking over fire right so I love it you can sit out here with your neighbors and uh, enjoy yourselves and, and this really is this is like one of the things that's really neat about Cabo is like you can eat dinner with your neighbors <laughs> like and uh, I love it I love I love these guys their daughters around here somewhere this fine gentleman here is actually the, the father-in-law of one of my favorite bartenders in town, some place called The Porch. Apparently it's really good, and uh, it's really good. But we're really excited to, to always like spotlight and highlight places like this, and one, have really good food.